Great of money. How are we doing? Rate of morning to everyone. How is everyone? As you all know, this is your captain speaking. Oh. Yesterday was not a good day. Let's just put it that way. Oh. Definitely was not a good day. What's going on, Leroy? Hope everybody doing good. Because, uh, Raiders, as a collective, we have to stand up together. We have got to work together. We have got to get this thing rolling. We have got to start making plays. We have got to start playing defense. We have got to start stopping the opposing offenses. We have got to start throwing the ball down the field. We have to stop all these short yard little dinky dunk plays it does not work it is a backup it is a safety valve not a not an immediate target not number one definitely not number two three four maybe but number one should be all the way down the field number two should be right there behind him on the other side i mean <clears throat> we are too good to be looking like we looking. I don't think so, Ralph. I think we need a better system. Tom Cable's zone blocking scheme don't really work when you got man on man brawlers. I mean, zone blocking is for more weaker skilled linemen than most talented, strong power linemen. I mean, we have the arguably the best interior on any team on the on, on the offensive line. KO, who's hurt, Rodney Hudson, Gabe Jackson. Gabe Jackson needs to get back in form. We paid him all this money. He's not acting like he deserves it. We paid all this money to Carr. He's acting like he don't know what to do either. Not sure what's going on right now. But how about this? I was thinking, maybe next time Carr has a game like this, we pull him, put AJ in, tell him, this is what could happen to you. Just show him. Show him exactly what could happen. Maybe that would get him together. Maybe then he he'll start pulling putting them fillings and 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 his skills to true use like he has, like he has before. But I mean, what he's doing right now, it's not helping us at all. But the offensive play calling is not helping him at all. So I mean, it's it, it goes round and round. I mean, so who actually deserves the blame for these losses? Is it Gruden? Is it Carr? Is it Greg Olson? Is it the defense? Or is it all of them? Piece by piece, everybody showed us the blame together and picks it up and does better. Bruce Irvin acts like he doesn't even care. I agree, Tommy. The 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 scheme blocking and and the offensive play calls are honestly what what is holding our offense back from doing anything at all. I mean, that's just what it is. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm looking. That that's what I'm seeing. I mean, so <clears throat> if we start blocking better, if we start calling better plays. Shouldn't nothing be holding us back. Ain't nothing should be holding us back anyways. Because we are too good of a team. And that's the thing. But yet again, like I said 
and I'm going to continue to keep saying is that we're not utilizing the matchups that we have. I mean, and, and now it looks like we, we, we might have lost Amari for maybe a week, a couple of weeks. And th that's not helping nobody, even though he hadn't been, a, I mean, a true impact player this year, except for what week three it was. I mean, that's all he done. I mean, he he, he stopped dropping the the big balls that he that he that, that he dropped the first two years in his career. I mean, and now we're just not throwing the ball to him. So, I mean, and I've seen plenty of reports where we're talking about trading him. I mean. If he's hurt now, we can't trade him. If he's going to get healthy before deadline, we could still trade him. But what we would what would we get for him? Another receiver? Draft pick? Unproven? True, but it's also hard to be an impact player when He's thrown the ball to you countless of times, but all you've done or managed to do is drop the ball. I mean, so, I mean, that's not a good deal either. I mean, so, I mean, it's not just one. It's 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 a two, two-sided two die. I mean, you, you roll it, I mean, and, and it's going to come out heads either way because both of them are dead. I mean, so, I mean, somebody's got to pick up the slack somewhere. Somebody's got to pick it up. And honestly, I think Martavis Bryant is probably the best receiver we have on the team. Just as long as he's staying out of trouble, not doing nothing. No, not this year, but plenty of times before. Plenty of times before this year. <clears throat> exactly exactly can't make an impact if only you think you're gonna do is drop them. morning brian what uh what takeaways did y'all get from the game yesterday yes it was yes it was no energy, no fire, and the injuries. Yes, that's the thing. Is all this is coming down like a snowball down off the top of the mountain, and it's nothing but getting bigger and worse and worse. I mean, <clears throat> the players that we need to step up, Bruce Irvin, in particular. I mean, he he's on record saying that he doesn't care that we lost. He's got a beautiful wife at the house. What does that mean? Well, let's make a beautiful wife on this field. Let's do that. We, we're going to find out about Carr. And like I said, the best way to do so is the next time he has a bad game like he had yesterday, go ahead and pull him and see what happens. I just don't want him to lose everything. David, I think that's more on the play calling itself than it, on, on car, uh, honestly. I mean, because most of these plays that I'm seeing are really busted and really ugly. And ain't none of that about that works at all. Because you have to work together. Ain't nobody coming together and pulling it together to work together. And that's what we have to do. Because if you stick them out there by themselves, they will fail every time because they are by themselves. But if we work as a team, we can overcome all things because it is teamwork that makes the dream work. And it's that simple. Irvin? Probably. Yeah. I mean, that's what he said. What's going on, Ricardo? Uh, horrible showed his lack of desire and and lack 
of willingness to try to make any true contribution on the field because he's looking outside of the field. When you're on the field, don't take your eyes off your opponent for one second. Continue to stare him dead in his face and don't smile at him. Don't laugh with him. Kill him. It's that simple. What's going on, Benny Bear? Exactly. I don't either. Who do you pull for? Yes. Yes, I saw Gruden. Yeah, I heard him. And uh, it's about time that, that somebody starts taking taking some sort of blame here. Because somebody's going to have to get it together. I don't think it's going to be a two-year rebuild. But the, the the other two picks that we got from, from the Bears are definitely going to help stock us up. <clears throat> because honestly, I don't think we'll need another draft after next year. Like Al Davis said, the greatness of the Raiders is in the future. I've been claiming this on car. Cars look really good. Cars look the best quarterback we've had since Gannon. Look at him now. What's what's going on? Somehow he needs to get back into the game, upgrade himself like he was, and get back right. Yes. Right tackle needs to be solidified. Colton Miller, he's 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 gonna, he's gonna he's gonna get worked up. He's gonna be fine next year. A lot of these players that were that, that we drafted this year are gonna be fine. Arden Key, Mo Hurts, PJ Hall, he's got to get healthy. He's got to stay healthy. Uh, John Hankins, we picked up. He's still young. Uh, a lot of these guys that we have on this defensive squad will be able to come and transfer and transit all the way to Vegas, most likely, because they are so young and they are so good. But like I said, if we want to really go ahead and, and go ahead and fill us up, we go ahead and take another defensive tackle and we go ahead and find a replacement for Mac in, in the draft. I mean, it's going to be that simple. And honestly, it's probably going to be that first pick that we take the defense in. I mean, and that that's going to make the most sense to do. Second pick, defensive tackle. Or we'll go ahead and address right tackle right then and there unless we trade Amari. Now, if we trade Amari, we're going to have to find a wide receiver, somebody that's going to pick up the slack. But then again, we have Martavis Bryant, who I feel is more than capable of stepping up and being our lead guy and in, in going, going forward. I mean, because he's 6'4", He's not that big at 211, but I mean, he's he's got room and he's definitely big enough. I mean, and he's got the speed. To me, he's the best receiver that's come from Clemson in the NFL. And that's that's going for Sammy Watkins, uh, Nuke Hopkins, all these players, and Martavis Bryant played with them all. What's going on, Commission? Yes, we do. Yes, we do, uh, Christopher. <coughs> and we will need a running back, uh, David. But uh, I wonder if Chris Warren is uh, actually the answer. Because he looked really good in the preseason. Although, yeah, he was mostly playing against third and fourth stringers. But still, again, he looked really good. He knew how to find the, hall, eh, the, the hole and he knew how to burst through. What about Bosa? Uh, he looks pretty good. I mean, but I'm not a real big fan of Ohio State. So, I mean, I don't think Bryant's going anywhere. I don't think so. If he, if he was going to be gone, he would have been cut. He was He was cut, but he was brought immediately back in. And that's not because he knew the playbook. 
I almost guarantee you that 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 was just pure athleticism and pure skill is why we brought him right back in. He, he's he's a hard runner, and uh, we're gonna need somebody to team up with him. But I believe that Chris Warren will will, will be able to adjust and and uh, elevate his game to to uh, accordingly. Like I said, offensive line is going to be addressed. Uh, the right tackle position is about the only thing that we really need is the right tackle. Because if we get the right tackle, everything else is going to fall back into place. That's going to give Gabe Jackson his his road dog to play with on every down. That's going to give Colton Miller the best chance to, to, to become a star at left tackle because he's got all that help everywhere else. And it's not just on the blind side. True, Andreas. He is on a one-year deal, but after this year, I, I foresee us re-signing him for the long term. I mean, he might not get top dog money, but he's going to get enough money to where he's going to want to stay and make us better. What's going on, El Campo? But, uh, all things add up, though, man. Uh, we just got to continue striving, continue to grow, continue working on, on, the, on their craft and continue growing because, I mean, a lot of our players, like I said, they're not really into it this year, and I don't know why. Gruden's going to have to up up the skates and, and just tell them, if you don't want to play, we'll find somebody else to plug and play with you. I mean, because, I mean, it's just, uh, it doesn't make any sense. What's going on, John? <clears throat> it just doesn't make any sense why we look like we look when we are, are so deep on everything except for defensive end. That's the only thing that we're truly missing is the defensive end. And, I mean, our defense looks like trash. Our offense looks like trash. Our special teams look like trash. I mean, but somehow somebody's just got to get them all together on the same page to continue to work rather than finding happiness and losing. Because Lisa and Jesse, uh, like I said before, I believe mostly it comes down to play calling. But then again, Carr hasn't been the same since 2016. But he's he, he's putting up the stats. He's, he's proven that he's still good by by putting stats up. That that proves that you that you are still making the the effort to continue to go all the time. But on the other hand, it's not coming together. Ain't nobody but him honestly really trying besides Beast Mode. I mean, Marshawn's the only one that's really carrying the load. I mean, because especially on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, ain't nobody else really doing nothing. I mean, the first three weeks had Jerry Cook showing up. Then you had Jordy Nelson. Then you had Amari. Then you had Jared again. Then you had Nelson again. But at the same time, you can't just have one guy doing all the work. You need the whole team's effort to continually always improve and to always grow, to always get better. Because if you stake with one person all the time, it's easy to shut you down. If you do not utilize the matchups that we have, that we are able to create and not do nothing with them, that's nothing but wasted time, wasted effort, and wasted energy from everybody on every snap. I mean, but <clears throat> as soon as the offensive play calling comes together, I feel by putting the points up that are capable of being put up, then ain't nothing going to be wrong with it. Everything's going to get better. But until that point, until they start calling the plays in the, in the rhythmic motion as to wanting to win the game, it's not going to work out because you're sticking people out there without a full understanding of what you're trying to do by the plays that you're calling. It shows. I mean, I mean, Gruden is supposed to be the greatest offensive mind ever, right or wrong. If 
that's the case, it shouldn't be that hard for them to find the playbook that's going to work for everybody. But he's proven it this year that he doesn't need it and, and, and he's not gotten in trouble. So that's what I'm looking at. And honestly, he's one of them guys that, that was getting migraines. So I wonder if, if that's why he went back and reverted to doing so. That's that, that's what I'm saying, Christopher. If if he goes out there and has another bad game like he did yesterday and the week before that, pull him. Let him ride the pine until he takes back over in practice all the time, leading the team the way he needs to. Exactly. That's that's why we cut him. They dropped it. He hasn't done anything else. Exactly. And that's what that, that, that's really what I'm saying, Victor, is, is <clears throat> like I said, Al Davis said that the greatness of the Raiders are, is in the future, which means it's not tomorrow, not the next day, but the coming years will be ours. We might be the punch joke right now, but I promise you, in the, in the end of it all, we're going to be the ones that's sitting there laughing. Because when we move to Vegas, like I said before, Ask yourself one question. Does the house ever lose? I don't think so. No, but the, but, but the new stadium is going to take away a lot of the old problems. That's, that's my thing. I mean, honestly, and, and from what I see of it, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's going to be the nicest stadium that ever anybody gets to play in. True that. But, like I'm saying, as long as he doesn't get into any more trouble, does anything wrong or anything like that, passes all drug tests, which is mandatory, I mean, it's fine. What's the old problems? A whole lot. Environment. Team infrastructure. That's something that will travel with us. But at the, uh, at the same slide of hand, as soon as Gruden gets back in, in full swing of everything, which will be next year, I believe everything's going to fall back into place. I believe he's going to pick up where, where he should have right here and now and, and not wasted this whole year. I don't I I don't disagree with that the uh the trade Irvin part but uh don't trade uh don't trade Carl yet. Taco Bell is not going to be a good NFL quarterback, I don't believe. But everybody deserves second chances and and some people grow up. What's going on James Raider? But uh, got nine minutes. If y'all got any questions or uh, anything, go ahead and shoot them at me. Somebody would trade a whole lot for car. Somebody would would, would give up their whole house for car. Because, like I'm saying, most of the problems that we're that that we're having. 
do not come from him directly, except for the interceptions. Some of them are his fault, yes. But if you put them in a position to where they're calling plays that somebody's going to get open with, it ain't going to be nothing like that. They're going to be open when we need them open and not a defender in front of them. Who? I don't know. Donkeys for one. <clears throat> Just like Mac, what you mean? Yeah, Shalik needs to get out there. He needs to stay healthy. He needs to stay energized. Because uh, when he's out there, he looks pretty good. But he's not consistent. Just like Arden Key. And Arden's got the excuse because he's the rookie. But uh, Shalik uh, definitely is a rotational player uh, that needs some more snaps. Put him back on the end. Put him back on the line. Maybe that could help us with, with, with generating some more pass rush rather than uh, sticking him out at linebacker like he's been playing, which doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, and another thing is, uh, talking about Matt, I thought we should have got uh, Lamar Houston back. I, th I, I think that would have been a fair trade. All of them picks plus Lamar Houston for Matt, I mean, that would have gave us another defensive end that is able to create some type of pressure on, on the offensive line to create a double team because he's so big. Then you got P.J. Hall, Mo Hurts, uh, Big Jelly, Hankins we picked up. Then uh, Bruce Irvin maybe might not be playing like he is right now because uh, maybe that's what it is with Irvin. Maybe Irvin feels like he's all by himself and doesn't have any help. I mean, which is kind of understandable because he's the only one besides. Like I said, the donkeys probably still give it up. Jaguars, another team. They just need a quarterback. Deadskins. Uh, Tampa Bay. Couple teams, couple teams. I know it, it might not be a first round pick, but we 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 get fair compensation. And honestly, that I I believe that's what it would be, because I believe most of the problems is coming from down from the coaching. They need to get their act together. They need to start with the game planning and getting it together. Tuh. Marquette Queen. You need to do something. Definitely ain't kicking the ball for the rest of the year. Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, I looked at it early. But, uh. It's, it's, it's not on my head right now. That's what the Friday show is for, honestly. <clears throat> but, uh, like I said, I believe with time, all things will be fixed. Everything's going to be the way it should be. It's just going to take a little bit more time. Grow patience. Understanding. Knowledge. Watch. Wait for the call. He'll be fine. I believe he will be fine. If not, like I said, pull him. Let him know what happens. Maybe this year. 
not 2016. It led us to the playoffs. Tied the single franchise record for most wins. There you go. There you go. Little bolts. Luck is worse than car. By a mile. You don't even know if he's going to be healthy next week. Uh, not real sure. Uh, the, the way it looks, he's probably going to be under concussion protocol. Uh, which means, uh, it's going to be a day by day type of deal. And, uh, we'll know something by Wednesday. Yes, I did. But like I said, I believe most of our problems come down from coaching. But like a defensive effort as well, except for the first three games where our defense looked really good until they got tired. Brisket? I love brisket. <laughs> Put a little barbecue sauce on it. It's delicious. Brisket ain't, ain't no answer. Brisket definitely is not the answer for anything. He might be better than E.J. Manuel. What's going on, Cairo? Yeah, 2016, it sure did. We was playing effective, manageable football. Yeah, by who? Derek Carr and Khalil Mack. Mack was the one setting up Carr, and Carr was the one finishing. No, not at all. Never been close to getting to the playoffs. But Brisket is a pretty decent quarterback. I ain't going to sit here in front on him. He's pretty good. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd go get him their uh, second-string quarterback. Let him fight it out with A.J. McCarron next year. I, th I, think that's a, I think that sounds like a good deal for him. Give him a chance to, to back up. Or let them all three run for the shot for number one. See what happens with that. But uh, it's almost that time, y'all. Uh, I'll be back for uh, 45 minutes Wednesday at uh, 8.15, 5.15, depending on where you at. Uh, but uh, it's definitely a pleasure, and it's definitely an honor every time with y'all in the Raider Nation. One love. Appreciate the love. And uh, Captain's out, baby.